Welcome back again. We now have a Jenkins continuous integration server set up on Amazon EC2. We have a GitHub repository from which Jenkins is pulling our code, it's building it and testing it. And now we want to set up GitHub so that it will notify Jenkins every time a change is pushed to the repository. So then Jenkins will automatically pull the code down from GitHub, build it and run all of its tests. We also want to set up Jenkins to run some line coverage reports for us so that we can always know the line coverage of our project. And so in this video, we will cover both of those aspects. So the first thing you'll want to do is go to your GitHub repository and click on settings. And then we'll go over to webhooks and services and then click on configure services. Now we're going to, going to scroll down in the list here and we should find Jenkins. There's actually Jenkins Git plugin and Jenkins GitHub plugin. Uh, I have not been able to get the GitHub plugin webhook working. Uh, there seems to be a bug with the GitHub plugin in Jenkins right now. So we're going to use the Git plugin. So what we want to do is paste in the URL for our Jenkins server. So we'll just paste that in there and we will make it active. Now you'll notice down here that it says that in order for this plugin to work, we have to enable the pull SCM build trigger. Um, but it says that we can, we can have it pull very infrequently. So I'm just going to copy this line here, just starting from the zero and going to the last star here. Just copy that and then we'll click on update settings. Okay, so we now have the, we have GitHub configured to notify our Jenkins server every time a change is pushed to the repository. Now we need to go over to the Jenkins side and just do a bit of configuration there. So I'll just go into the project here and click on configure. Now, as it said, we need to enable the poll SCM build option. So I'm going to click on poll SCM here. And for the schedule, I'll just paste in that line that I got when I was configuring the webhook. Okay, so now we should be able to save this up. And let's actually try pushing something to GitHub and make sure that it automatically notifies Jenkins and it starts a build for us. So here I am in a terminal on my own system and I'm just in my project repository here and I'm just going to make a readme file just so that we can add some sort of change to the repository to get GitHub to notify Jenkins that there are changes available. So I'll just put in hello world or something like that. We'll save that up. I'll say git add dot, git commit and we'll just say testing webhook and then we will push to GitHub. Now, if we click back over here, I'm gonna enable auto refresh again, and you can see that it is pending, so it's about to start a new build. So GitHub has notified the Jenkins server that there are changes available, and Jenkins is now checking out the code, and it is building it. So that works, perfect. Now, the next thing we want to do is generate some line coverage reports. We'll have Jenkins automatically generate line coverage reports every time it runs all of our tests. So we'll scroll back up here and we will go back to the project and we'll go back to the dashboard. And actually we want to click on manage Jenkins. There's a particular plugin that we need to install. So I'll click on manage plugins. And if we go to the available plugins list, we want to install a plugin called Jacoco. That's Java Code Coverage. Okay, so I'll just check install beside that and we will download now and install after restart. And then once again, we will just click Restart Jenkins when the installation is complete. And that's just going to take a few minutes. So you'll have to reload the page in about three or four minutes time. Okay, once Jenkins is back up, we can log back in. And we'll go back to the dashboard. And then back to our project. Now we'll go back to the project configuration. And we need to configure the project so that it will uh, gather the Jacoco reports and make them available through Jenkins. So under the post build actions here, we'll click on add post build action and I'll select record Jacoco coverage report. And we can just leave this as is. You could set certain thresholds, like if you wanted to maintain a certain line coverage, let's say that we want to consider 80% 
line coverage or higher to be a successful build and anything less to be a failed build. You could actually specify the thresholds in here and click on change build status according to the thresholds. Uh, we won't bother with that in this video, so we'll just save this up. And now we actually have to go and configure Jacoco in our maven pom.xml file. Now, switching back to our repository on our local system here, I'm going to edit the pom.xml file, and there's just a bit of configuration that we have to paste in here. You can get this from the gist that I've put in the uh, description of the video here. So I'll just type in colon set paste, and then we'll go into insert mode, and I'll just paste that right in. And I'll just reformat that here. So essentially what I'm doing is I am enabling the Jacoco plugin, and what I'm saying is that before the unit tests run, uh, we need to prepare the Jacoco agent. So we have to start the Jacoco agent. And then after the unit tests have run, we want to generate a report on the code coverage. So we'll save that up. Now, we don't actually have any tests in our project yet. So that's the first thing we need to do. Let's add a test. You may remember that we have this bank account class in our project and it has a debit method. So let's write a test for this debit method. Uh, we'll just test the, the optimal case where there is enough money left in the account. So let's write a test for that. So we'll edit source test Java and we're looking for the test bank account .java file. And so I'm going to add in a test here. We'll say at test and we'll say public void test uh, debit with sufficient funds. And so we will instantiate a bank account object. So we'll say bank account account equals new bank account and maybe we'll put $10 into that account. Next we want to say okay well let's say double amount equals account dot debit and maybe we will withdraw $5. And so we're assuming that the amount that was actually debited from the account should be $5 because there's $10 available in the account. And so we'll say assert dot assert equals, again, we're assuming 5.0 5 is equal to the amount that was returned from the debit method. So we'll save that up and quit. And we're going to add that to our repository. We'll commit. So I'll just say adds Jacoco plugin and a test. And we will push that to the repository and that should trigger a Jenkins build. And then switching back here, we can see that Jenkins is now about to start a build. There we go. So we'll click in and we'll take a look at the console output for that build. And you can see that the Jacoco plugin is being downloaded. So far, so good. And now you can see that it's compiled the code, it's compiled the tests, and now it's running all of the tests. Okay, so we have one test run, there were no failures, so that test passed, that's good. And you can see that the Jacoco plugin ran, so it generated a report, and we should now be able to see it in Jenkins. So I'll scroll back up to the top here, we'll go back to the project, and now we have this code coverage trend graph. There's nothing on the graph yet because we've only run one build with Jacoco enabled, but as we run further builds, we'll see this graph start to have some content in it. So I can click in on this graph and we get some statistics on the package. So here it says that we have 86% line coverage in this package and if we click in on it, we can see an individual breakdown. So here's the bank account class and within the bank account class, we have 100% line coverage within the constructor because our test that we wrote, it instantiated um, a bank account object, so it ran that constructor. And then we have 75% line coverage in the debit class because we executed these lines in the test that we, we uh, wrote, but we did not execute this line. The, this particular branch. And you'll notice if we hover over this yellow line here, it's saying that one of two branches were missed because we wrote code that skipped this particular branch. It did not, this condition was not true. So it skipped over this block and it just ran these lines of code here. So we have only 50% branch coverage because we didn't take this particular branch. 
So let's write another test to hopefully get us 100% branch coverage and 100% line coverage. Switching back to our test file, we'll just add another test. I'm just going to copy this entire test here and we'll paste it in again. And we'll change this to test debit with insufficient funds. Okay, and so we'll say uh, bank account with $10, we'll try to debit $11 but it should only return $10 to us because there's only $10 in the account. So once again, we'll do a git add dot, git commit, tests uh, debit with insufficient funds, and we will push that to GitHub again. Once again, that should trigger a Jenkins build. And switching back to Jenkins, we now see that once again, it's pending. So we'll click in on that and we'll just watch the build in progress. And once again, all of the tests have been run. Uh, this time there were two tests run and zero failures. So that second test that we just wrote passed as well. Perfect. So we are now finished. We'll scroll back up, go back to the project. And we now have a test result trend. So we had one test at, uh, in the first commit and now we have two tests. So it's just letting us know the trend there. And we also have some data on our code coverage trend the line coverage has gone up and the lines missed have gone down. So if we click in on that once again, we see that we have 100% coverage in our package now. And we'll just click in and take a look here. All the lines are now green and we have 100% branch coverage. And again, if we hover over this, it should tell us that all two branches were covered because we have taken both uh, the case where the branch is not taken and we've taken the case where the branch is taken. Okay, that wraps up our video tutorial on installing and configuring a Jenkins continuous integration server on Amazon EC2. I do encourage you to play around with Jenkins a little bit. Take a look at some of the plugins, go into Manage Jenkins, and uh, take a look at the, the Manage Plugins section and, and see what sort of functionality you can add to Jenkins through plugins. So, thanks for watching. I hope you find Jenkins useful and have fun with it.